Hello everybody, my name is Klaus and I'm publishing a blog in Swedish about geospatial support systems. In this video I'll give you an introduction to open source GIS software QGIS to help you get started. QGIS can be freely downloaded from QGIS.org to all major operating systems. There are for instance instructions for installation on different Linux distributions. Windows installation packages both for 32 and 64 bit and also instructions on how to install on Mac. For Mac, you also need to install some dependencies separately, but you can get all this information through the links on the site. Since this is an open source project with a lot of voluntary work and contributions, you are encouraged to support the project any way you can. You can do this by don donating through PayPal or Flatter, for example. When you start QGIS, you will find a window with a large area called Map Canvas. Some panels that can be used to browse data or manage loaded map layers. Several toolbars with different functions. And of course, a menu bar. All toolbars are dockable and can be organized any way you want to. You can dock them at various locations or have them float on top of the main window. Panels can also be floated, moved around and docked at various locations. You can also dock several panels on top of each other, which arrange them in tabs. To quickly get started, we will begin by installing a plugin that will make a lot of online maps available to you. There are a lot of different plugins available in the repository, and the manager is the place to install, update, activate, or deactivate them. Right now, you will need to install the Open Layers plugin, so just type in Open Layers in the search field, select it, and hit Install. To add a layer with the plugin, you go to the web menu and select Open Layers plugin. Here you can choose from a lot of different available maps, which will be helpful when you are getting started. Just remember that these layers are not ordinary layers and you may not be able to have several available in the, your layer list at the same time. I'll be using Bing's aerial map to start with. To navigate the map, you use the map navigation toolbar. Here you will find the tools to pan and zoom the map, as well as a few predefined tools that lets you pan and zoom to a selection or the full extent of the data. You can also go back and forward in the navigation history with designated buttons. Most navigation can also be done with the wheel of the mouse. Scrolling the wheel will zoom in and out, and pressing the wheel will enable panning. These functions are independent of the currently selected tool. For the next step, I'll select an area in the imagery. To create your own layers, you will use two new toolbars. Initially, the Manage Layers toolbar. It lets you add layers of different types, but also create new vector layers. New vector layers can be in s shape or spatialite format. Here I'll use shape. And the keyboard shortcut for new shape file layer is Control shift n To create the layer, you will need to select if it will be a point, line or polygon layer. A single shape file layer can only contain one type of geometry. There's also a lot of settings here that you don't need to change right now. When you edit your geometries, you may want to store information about them. This is called attributes and can be added by name and type. There are some naming conventions for this, but keep it simple and short and you should be okay. By defining the type and width you can limit the assigned storage space and streamline your data. Mm -hmm. 
When you click OK, you will be asked where and under what name the file should be created. The empty layer will be added to your layer list. You can rearrange the order of the layers simply by drag and drop. To edit the layer, you'll need the digitizing toolbar. To edit a layer, first select it and then press Toggle Editing, which will enable the editing tools. Depending on the type of geometry for the layer, it may look slightly different. It is however essentially the same. Here you will find buttons to save edits, add or move features, and edit individual nodes inside a feature geometry. When you add a new feature, you add nodes by clicking the left mouse button. To undo a node, you can press delete or backspace. To finish the feature, click the right mouse button. In the Feature Attributes form, you can fill in the values you want to store for the feature. The feature or object is created and it is possible to move it or edit the nodes with the appropriate tools in the toolbar. The geometry is not however saved yet and only exists in memory. To save it, press Save Layer Edits. If you did a mistake and don't save, you can cancel all the edits or roll them back backwards. Stop the edit session by toggling editing off. The layer is now formatted in a very simple way. The next step is to change this. Most things in QGIS has a context menu that you reach by right click. Layers are no exception. Here you can find a lot of useful options regarding the current layer, including the layer properties. Layer properties can also be reached by double-clicking the layer. The layer properties has a number of tabs, depending on the type of layer. In the general tab, you can change the layer name and encoding. In this video, I'll focus on the next two tabs. The style tab lets you select a method for styling and set the properties for this in great detail. I use categorized method based on my attribute type. Each type can be individually styled by the context menu or by double-clicking the type. In the symbol selector you can choose from a number of predefined styles or create your own. And you will have a really good tool for selecting colors. You can even pick colors from the desktop if you want to. There are a lot of symbol layer types with the different properties to choose from if you want to create a custom symbol. You can combine several symbol layers into a custom symbol in any way you want.
You may want to add some transparency to the layer so that the background becomes visible through the layer. To preview the settings, you can press Apply. If you want to place a label at each feature, you select the Labels tab and enable labeling according to a suitable attribute. You can then select Font, Style, Size, Color, Transparency, etc. in the text properties. As usual, you can preview your settings with the Apply button. There's a lot of property options available for labels. You can add buffer, which will give you a halo effect for the text. Color, size and transparency, for example, can be set individually for most of these properties. So the combinations are seemingly endless. You can add backgrounds, drop shadows, and control how the label is placed and rendered with great flexibility. If you save your layer style, the button in the lower right, to a QGIS layer style file, and place this file at the same location as the layer file with the same base name, QGIS will recognize the style automatically and apply it when you add the layer to a project the next time. To add your vector layer, use the Add Vector Layer tool. You can filter the files by selecting the correct file type. And if you previously have saved your layer style correctly, it will be used to style the layer. Finally, I'll try my layer with an OpenStreetMap background to compare my feature with it. To save your project, you can use the menu or press Ctrl S. The project file will have a QGS file type and can be opened the same way you would use a spreadsheet file or text document. Here I'll start a new empty project and then open the project I just saved. This ends this very basic tutorial on how to get started with open source GIS and QGIS. Don't forget to support the project and sub subscribe to the channel. I'll include links to additional resources in the text below. Mm -hmm.